I um, witnessed Mr. Miscavige physically um, punching in the face and wrestling to the ground another very senior um, executive at Scientology International level. On February 9th, 2012, a pretrial hearing was held in San Antonio, Texas, in the case of Church of Scientology Flag Service Organization versus Debbie Cook. I traveled to San Antonio to observe for myself firsthand what was going to happen, as I had personally known Debbie for many years to be the chief executive of Scientology's Mecca of Technical Perfection in Clearwater, Florida, and was one of the recipients of her New Year's Eve email that prompted this lawsuit by her former employer, a religious organization I had been a part of for over 15 years. My plan was to arrive at the courthouse very early so I could observe everything, including who was coming and going. I arrived at 7 a.m. After the hearing was assigned to a judge, we all quickly moved to her courtroom. There were many members of the media there, and the courtroom was almost full. Judge Tanner decided to allow one video camera for the media pool, but on the second day she allowed all of them. The only witness called to give testimony on the first day was Debbie, and she spent hours revealing details of her career in the Sea Organization, including the time she was incarcerated against her will at the International Management Facility near Hemet, California, and at the facility she had once presided over in Clearwater, Florida. The courtroom was shocked and outraged at what she reported under oath, to say the least. Debbie was questioned extensively by her attorney, Ray Jeffrey, about David Miscavige. When Mr. Jeffrey told Debbie during his cross-examination that he was going to ask her about the whole, I felt a sense of shock and reached for my camera to get what video I could of what she was about to say. I um, witnessed Mr. Miscavige physically um, punching in the face and wrestling to the ground another very senior um, executive at Scientology International level. In 2005, did you learn about the whole? Yes, I did. How did you find out about it? Um, Mr. Miscavige briefed me about it and explained um, that uh, that he had put about 40 executives of Scientology International into basically locked up into a room called the Hole, and he took me there um, personally and showed me. Did Mr. Miscavige tell you about things that he did to humiliate and punish? executives such as yourself and others. When you were in Los Angeles with Mr. Ging and Nelson, what happened that you observed? Okay, he was, um, he originated that he did not agree with physical beatings or the this um, room, this locked up, you know, these executives being locked up. And for this he was um, beaten up by um, Mr. Miscavige's assistant. Um, it was her title as a communicator, and um, he was also um, beaten up by two other guys that were there in a meeting with us, which was um, Henning. I can't remember Henning's last name and Francois de Just. Um, they were two pretty big guys and he was actually taken back into a, a room and he was beaten up physically for a couple hours. Anything else happened with Mr. Ging and Nelson on your trip to he, Los Angeles? Yes. What was that? He was made to um, lick the bathroom floor clean. Well, lick the bathroom floor for over at least a half an hour. Did you ever begin to receive, uh, or were you ever the recipient of any violence? Yes, I was. And describe 
that for us? Did, did it begin all at once in full force, or did it begin in small ways? It was it was small ways, different um, different incidents of it. Um, one time I was uh, called into a conference room and asked some questions, and he ordered his his secretary to slap me, and she um, slapped me so hard I fell fell over into the chairs. Um, one time he, uh, Mr. Scavenger ordered his communicator to break my finger if I didn't answer uh, his question. Debbie's testimony lasted all of Thursday and on Friday morning before Mr. Jeffrey could resume cross-examination the Scientology attorneys informed Judge Tanner that they were withdrawing their motion, which effectively ended the hearing. Ultimately, the lawsuit was settled before the trial began. I'm Mike Bennett, and I want to thank you for watching my video. And encourage you to not believe anything that I'm saying or don't believe anything that anybody says. Do your own independent investigation and come to your own conclusions.